Be sure to subscribe to WXOU Sports on YouTube. WXOU Sports is the place to be for all things sports from your favorite college radio station. WXOU Sports features live audio broadcasts of all Oakland University home games, including men's and women's basketball. They also feature interviews with athletes and coaches, with highlights, and more. Just go to YouTube and search WXOU Sports and hit subscribe. Now, back to the show. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Joe Mo Show, your home for all Oakland University Golden Grizzlies sports. My name is Giovanni Mosheri. I am the host of the Joe Mo Show, Oakland University alum, class of 2024, and WXOU alum as well. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to help support the show as we are getting into conference season for both men's and women's basketball. Swim and dive into their season as well. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. And another way to ensure that you don't miss a thing is to follow the Joe Mo Show all over social media. You can follow me on Instagram at the G-I-O-M-O Show, on Twitter at G-I-O Mo Sherry W-X-O-U, and use the hashtag the G-I-O-M-O Show to stay connected with the show. It's a little bit less news than we usually get, especially because the soccer and volleyball seasons have ceased. And right now through the winter, it is swim and dive and men's and women's basketball that will carry us into the flowery spring that will probably come in around June here in Michigan. So we appreciate you guys stopping by. Once again, be sure to subscribe. We'll start things off with swim and dive before women are moving into women's basketball and finishing things out with men's basketball. And we got it all time stamped here on YouTube and wherever you're listening to the Joe Mo Show, wherever you get your podcast so feel free to skip to the sport that you want to hear the most but if you're here with me now it is still much appreciated let's go to swim and dive as some small news so business as usual for the swim and dive team ellie shalafo our diver for the golden grizzlies won another diver of the week honor for her performance at eastern michigan where she was first place in the one meter dive and second place in the three meter dive And for the one-meter dive, she was a whole 10 points higher than that of second place. This is one of the many Diver of the Week honors that Ellie Shalafo has won. This one being the second time this season alone that she has won it back-to-back weeks. So congratulations to Ellie Shalafo and the swim and dive team, the women's swim and dive team specifically because it was only the women's team facing Eastern Michigan. That meet was a whole couple of weeks ago, but until recently we got the full news and results of it. Unfortunately, the meet as a whole did not come with a win for the Golden Grizzlies, but great individual performances were had as well. And as they get farther into the Horizon League season of swim and dive, it all just builds up to the Horizon League Championship meets where no matter who you face, no matter who you lost to, it's about your times and how they stack up to the Horizon League competition. And I'm confident that the Golden Grizzlies will stack up well in that Horizon League Championship meet that will be coming. Usually they come later in February off the top of my head, but be sure to stick around to the Joe Mo Show to hear the story as we make our way to that meet. To try and keep the conference winning streak going, I believe this year for the men's team, it'll be 48 years in a row to win a conference championship. And for the women, we're getting into the 30s of years straight winning a conference championship. So stay tuned for all of that. And quickly ending the swim and dive portion of the show, we head into women's basketball where two games were played in the Coast to Coast Classic held in Daytona Beach, Florida, where the Golden Grizzlies had two games against the University of Richmond and Old Dominion University. Unfortunately, the Golden Grizzlies came out of that, came back to the cold weather of Michigan without a win. First facing University of Richmond on Friday morning where they will lose to the Spiders 76-49. to Oakland would have a strong start, taking the lead in the first quarter, 13-11, but just could not hold on as they were pretty much dump-trucked in the second quarter, outscored 30-6 to to amount to a lead for Richmond that would be insurmountable for the Golden Grizzlies, eventually leading to their 76-49 to loss. Some standouts in the box score was, Mace, was Macy Smith making three out of seven three-pointers attempted for 11 points, leading the Golden Grizzlies. Ten points was had by Liana Baxter, who was four of six from the floor and two of two 
from the three, along with three rebounds, a block, and a steal to accompany those 10 points. And third in scoring for the Golden Grizzlies was Madison Royal Davis with eight, who was three of nine from the floor, two of two from the line with a game or with a Oakland leading six rebounds. But unfortunately, not the performance that Oakland was hoping for, and it's set up for a much more close and competitive game for the Old Dominion match that they would face the next day in the afternoon. This is Saturday, November 30th. This one has a lot more story to it, so we'll give a lot more specific attention to it. This one, I, I won't give you the final score, and I'll let the story speak for itself. So Oakland started off the game against Old Dominion hot leading it 18-12 to 12 after the first quarter while Oakland was shooting 61.5% from the field, good for 8 of 13 from the field. But they did not stay hot for long as in the second quarter, the last five minutes heading into halftime, Oakland would find themselves in the middle of a scoring drought, giving Old Dominion the chance to gain the lead themselves. But through that scoring drought, that was a scoring drought from the field, some free throws from Oakland would be able to keep them alive and and keep the lead themselves. So, excuse me, it was Oakland that kept the lead 32-29 to going into halftime. But in that third quarter, Old Dominion would fight back with an 8 to nothing run in the third quarter that that would eventually give Old Dominion the lead. But Oakland would keep it close to about a four-point deficit going into that fourth quarter. And with that, Oakland would tie it at 50 points each thanks to a 6-0 run themselves, leaving five minutes left at a tie game at 50. Unfortunately, Old Dominion would respond to that run with a run of their own that would gain themselves the lead that they would not give up, leading to the defeat of the Golden Grizzlies. Final score, 64 to 56. So Oakland was able to keep this one close and competitive, but scoring droughts and allowing runs by Old Dominion uh, spelled defeat for the Golden Grizzlies. Taking some highlights from the box score here, Maddie Skorupski leading the Golden Grizzlies in scoring with 17 as she was an efficient 7 of 14 from the floor with two of her five three-pointers made along with five assists. Danny Grimm would get double digits as well with 11 points, an efficient 5 of 8 from the floor, making one of her four uh, three-point attempts, three rebounds, two assists, a block, and a steal as well. And rounding out the double-digit scoring for the Golden Grizzlies is Liana Baxter once again. Ten points and three of seven from the floor, one of three from three, making three of her four free throws with a Oakland leading six rebounds. Some Low spots for the Golden Grizzlies, unfortunately, came from Macy Smith and Kylie Buckley, who were a combined 1 of 14 from the floor and 1 of 10 from 3. The free throw line is where they were more efficient, making 8 of their 10 free throw attempts, but a gaping hole in the Oakland offense uh, was not was not good, to break the, to break the poetry of, what we're, of what, how I'm talking here. And then looking more into the shooting percentages here, like I mentioned, Oakland had a great shooting start against this Old Dominion team. 61.5% from the field, but it would drop to 33, 28, and 23% from the floor in the second, third, and fourth quarter. So it only descended as the game went on. They would finish 36.5% from the field and 21.7% from the three. Spelling two losses in Daytona Beach for the Golden Grizzlies in the Coast to Coast Classic, leaving them at a 2-6 and six overall record with conference play on the horizon. Friday night at the arena, they'll be hosting the Wright State Raiders, and then that will actually be the last game in the arena until the new year, where Oakland would then be on the road against Robert Morris, Indiana, and Northern Kentucky before coming back home to face Cleveland State on January 3rd. So December 6th will be the last time we see the Golden Grizzlies women's basketball team at the OU Credit Union Arena. So that'll wrap up the women's basketball segment here. When we come back, we'll dive headfirst into Oakland men's basketball and and specifically their big win on the road against the Toledo Rockets. We'll be right back after this short break on the Joe Mo Show. Welcome back here to the Joe Mo Show. Let's get into men's basketball. A great week 
was had by the Golden Grizzlies. They only had one game on the road on Saturday, November 30th, and it was one of their best games of the season. An 85-52 to win over the Toledo Rockets to get them a big win as they move into conference play coming up this week with a matchup against Wright State and then on the road against Youngstown State. And before we continue in this segment here, if you guys want much more in-depth coverage of this game i'll give it to you here on the joe mo show but for this week's game reviews i had a conversation with associate head coach of the golden grizzlies jeff smith otherwise known as smitty had him on the show to break down what we saw in toledo that night he just is the best interview as you know especially you know some coaches in every sport aren't as you know aren't as nice to talk to, you know, don't give as much away about what what they do, but Smitty is very open and he's a fantastic conversation to have. So if you guys want to hear that, I got that here on the Joe Mo show. Just look wherever you're listening or watching here on YouTube to get his thoughts on this game as well. But if you want to stick around here and watch that later, we appreciate that as well. So for this game, I want to set the stage as to what Oakland had coming in and what they were up against before we get into the game itself. So Oakland was coming off of a very disappointing win at home against Eastern Michigan, you know, capping off what they what was a originally a huge three game road trip facing top 25 teams, you know, some of the best teams in the nation in the previous few weeks. And finally, when they came back to the arena against Eastern, we were expecting a lot more and expecting to see a lot more progress for being in that kind of a gauntlet. And that was not what was had at the arena. Oakland would have a disappointing loss, I believe 68 to 64 against the Eastern Michigan Eagles. And a lot of us Oakland fans were in, were concerned that this team, the offense just isn't improving. We can't shoot from three. And, you know, that that's starting to affect a lot more than just the shooting itself. It's cascading down to the team, and we're all getting very concerned. And with Toledo being the next MAC opponent, their last one before the Horizon League season starts for the non-conference part, it was going to be a tall task for Oakland's offense and, and the team as a whole to, to wake up and return to form on the road against one of the best teams in the MAC. Toledo coming off of four straight years of winning the MAC regular season championship with a traditionally powerful offense. So this was going to be a real tall, t- tall task for the Golden Grizzlies, but that was the only option that was had. You can't have the performances like Eastern against that of Wright State. You got to get right against a tough Toledo Rockets team. But Oakland would absolutely get right. Like I said, if a 85 to 52 win in Toledo in Savage Arena 33 point victory margin it's not what we not what I was expecting to see from the Golden Grizzlies but that is what was had getting into the game flow Oakland would open up with a 10 to 6 lead after just about 6 minutes of play but Toledo would end up keeping it close tying it at 10 points and then tying it again at 17 with about 7 and a half minutes left to go in that first half. But then DQ Cole would make his first of six threes that he would have in that game that gave Oakland the lead and a lead that they would not give back and only a lead that they would grow throughout the game. Oakland built an 11-point lead going into halftime. Toledo would never have a chance to even lead in this game. The ties that we mentioned earlier were the only were the closest that Toledo got to having a lead in this game. DQ would have one of his best three-point shooting days of his OU career, ending up with six made three-pointers. Baru and El Mukeba would put in work on the inside, complementing the three-point shooting, and Jalen Jones would have a great night as well as Oakland would ride off into the sunset with a 33-point victory against Toledo. And it was such a good performance for DQ Cole that he earned a Horizon League Player of the Week award. With a career-high 22 points and six three-pointers made, brought down five boards as well, shooting at 57% from the floor and 54% from three, making six of his 11 attempts to get him Oakland men's basketball, the Player of the Week award for the Horizon League. This is the Horizon League's award being handed out to Mr. Cole. So some big takeaways from this game, the three-point shooting returns. 
uh, thanks in large part to DQ Cole. And as Campy was saying in the Grizz vision that DQ just said enough was enough. And him being a leader on the team, that meant a lot for him to put up those shots and start making them early. And that really lit the confidence on fire for the Golden Grizzlies as it wasn't just him that got the three-point shooting going. He was the majority of it. But you had Jalen Jones getting involved. You had Woodrich and Malcolm Christie make some threes as well. Jeremiah Bembry would make a three as well in the couple of minutes that he played. So a lot of Oakland got involved in a three-point shooting, enough to get them 50%. 11 for 22 from three in this game. That would be by far the best that Oakland has done so this season. No longer the country's worst three-point shooting team. We're just starting to return to form a little bit. But another huge piece to this game was that there was only five turnovers by the Golden Grizzlies. They would have more steals than turnovers given up. And that, would, that made a huge difference to take out Toledo's transition scoring to allow Oakland and their defense to just defend half court and you know set up and perform that defense that held the Rockets to a pretty close to season low. Their season low this year was 40, 45 that they had in their previous game to this one. But Oakland just had all around a great night. Everything was working. You know, like I mentioned, Baru and Mukeba. Uh, had great nights themselves as well. Or maybe I didn't mention it yet, but I'm mentioning it now. Baru and Mukeba combined for 33 points and 19 rebounds, and they were just everywhere. Early in the game, Mukeba was getting a lot of double teams, but that, you know, you know, Toledo was probably imagining that, you know, the three-point is not a threat for this team, at least this year, so they can, you know, sacrifice a defender to go and double Mukeba, but... That was not the night that Oakland's three-point shooting would stay down and it left things wide open, and that just started to open up everything else for the offense, and the snowball just kept rolling. So overall, it was a great night for the Golden Grizzlies, giving them a win before they go into conference play. Oakland sits at a 2-4 and four overall record, and they will be hosting the Wright State Raiders this Thursday at the OU Credit Union Arena before heading on the road to face Youngstown State this Saturday. And then their game, the big one for this month of December, I'm looking at my calendar here in my, uh, we'll call it a studio, but Michigan State would be the next game after this opening Horizon League weekend, December 17th, 7 p.m. on ESPN2 at Little Caesars Arena, and you can hear it on WXOU as well. I'm so happy that I got the call from WXOU. I'm going to be the play-by-play call for you guys. I've been to I've been to these Oakland Michigan State games at the Breslin Center, but never have I been to one at Little Caesars Arena as part of WXOU and let alone being able to call the game. I'm very excited, very um, happy and and grateful to Sports Director Gavin Smolowski for giving me that opportunity. I'll be on the call with Justin Shepard on on or at least near the sideline at Little Caesars Arena as Oakland takes on Michigan State Tuesday, December 17th, tip-off at 7 p.m. So it's going to be really, really exciting for you guys. I hope you guys are able to tune in to that one. But the season's getting real now, folks. we got that opening Horizon League week, both for men's and women's. And then we got Christmas break. we got some great non-conference games for the men's team, Michigan State, Arkansas, towards the end of the month as well. Those are going to be some huge games. I hope you guys are going to be able to tune in, enjoy it while you guys are on break. Like I mentioned, we got you on WXOU from the Michigan State one if you guys are already at home. And otherwise, we'll see you guys in January, at least physically. You know, I'll still be doing the Joe Mo show during break, so don't you worry. But it, it's we're getting down to it. We're in December. And I, I'm just, I hope you guys can tell I'm excited for it. This, this is where the sports season really gets going for Oakland with the basketballs on fire. Uh, when Swim and Dive is still putting in work as well, they'll be heading to uh, Greensboro, North Carolina this week for the Toyota U.S. Open. It, it, it's getting fun here. And when the spring comes, we'll have the golf, we'll have the tennis, we'll have uh, baseball and softball as well. I'm just giddy about it. I hope you guys are too. I'm just giddy about it. 
So that will wrap it up here on the Joe Mo Show. We covered swim and dive. We covered men's and women's basketball. Once again, you guys can go and check out my interview with associate head coach Jeff Smith of the Oakland men's basketball team to get his thoughts on the win against Toledo and what they're going to be looking forward to seeing against Wright State and Youngstown State for this opening week. So, from the Joe Mo Show, my name is Giovanni Mosheri, and we'll see you next week for all your Oakland University Golden Grizzlies coverage.